I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm on a mission to teach hopeless cooks how to be fearless in the kitchen. Today, a new mom who can't even turn on her stove. I don't know how to use this. She goes from mutilating chicken to taking the fun out of funnel cakes. Oh no, it fell apart. It goes in the garbage. Can she finally learn to make a meal from scratch? Or will her son's first words be, take out? This should be called Mission Impossible. <laughs> um, we can't serve this. This is all trash right now. Kristen! Yeah, it's scary. Really scary. Uh, it's bad. Okay. It's beyond bad. Okay, I'm nervous. I hope my house doesn't burn down. Simone has never really cooked in her life. She microwaves, she orders in, she takes out. Now that I got older, I'm sort of terrified of starting to do it. Well, my mom is a really good cook. You know, I was hoping that when I got married one day that I'd get married to also a really great cook. I adore her, but this poor woman cannot cook. <laughs> when she's tried to cook, the results were disastrous. She never really cooked for me when we were dating. The first time she actually did was on Valentine's Day. It just didn't work out. The steaks that she made, when she took them out, they were black. He said it was good. That's when I knew he liked me. Our dog, Roxy, loved it. But Simone's life has changed recently. Now I have a son, so it's really important for me to learn for his sake. In the end, I'm hoping that Simone can cook a delicious dinner for her husband, her family, and her friends, and that she can start her own family traditions in the kitchen. This is my kitchen. It's an awesome kitchen. And no cooking happens in here? Nope. <laughs> Why is it important now for you to learn to cook? Because I have a son, mm -hmm. and his name is Jesse, yeah. and I want to learn how to cook for him. With your grandma, did you cook together? Um, both grandmothers cooked a lot. I did a lot of baking okay. when I was little. I used to make cookies all the time, yeah. but I haven't done it in years. So we're going to take baby steps. OK. So the first step is, for me, to see you cook on your own. It scares me. It's just something that seems overwhelming. I was quite worried. What you're gonna make for me on your own is a chicken stir fry. You've got all kinds of ingredients here. You don't have to use them all, but you have to use the chicken. Are you kidding? <laughs> Would I go to all this trouble to kid you? Hey, you want me to cut this chicken? I do, yes. I don't know what to do with this. I'm supposed to be cutting this chicken, not mangling it. <laughs> I don't know how to use this. Did we say chicken sushi or stir fry? That clicking sound means it's still trying to light. You've got to turn it. <laughs> you like raisins? Raisins? Raisins. Really? What do you do with this? This is lettuce. <laughs> That's not even lettuce. It's spinach, and she didn't rinse it. I said stir fry, not dirt fry. It looks good. Look at it. it. It's not bad. Not bad. Hello. It looks nasty. All right, let's take it out. Let's let's have it. I don't want to taste it. Please save me. I got to tell you visually leaves a lot to be desired. And it's really soggy. <laughs> like, I just got a mouthful of chili and spinach grit. You taste it. Ugh. That wasn't you. We need to do a whole stir-fry makeover. Simone has zero skills in the kitchen, and she gets so nervous. I think it's really holding her back. I'm gonna start slow and focus on building her confidence with some basics. Simone, now what we're gonna do is make a beautiful chicken teriyaki stir-fry that you can make on your own. Let's start with chicken. I gave you chicken on the bone, and you had a tough time with that. We're gonna start with something easier. Chicken off the bone. We're gonna use breast. I want to show you how you're going to slice this. See how there's little lines going down the chicken this way? Yeah. 
anytime you're slicing, you want to go against the grain. It makes it more tender. Give it a fair bit of thickness, just like that. I noticed that you weren't really familiar with your cooktop, right? Right. You're going to just press light. As soon as you hear the clicking and then it lights up, you're good to go. You can just turn it to where you want it to be. Make sense? Yep. Wait till your pan gets hot, put in the chicken, and then you can saute that up nicely. You just want to keep tossing things around. So Jeremy comes home and you're whipping up this stir fry. He would be really happy. Very, very happy. And now I take it right out of the pan, set it aside, and now we're going to cook with our veggies. I'm going to add red onion, garlic, and some ginger. And keep it moving. That's the idea of stir frying, that you stir it as it fries. Now add the chili. Maybe do it a little bit less spicy than before. How about red peppers, carrots, broccoli? Does it smell good? It smells really good. This is going to be a teriyaki stir fry. And the teriyaki is a more Japanese flavor, so it already has a kind of sweet and sour thing happening. So now you can throw back in your chicken. Perfect, give that little stir around, and you're good to go. This is healthy, fast. Now why don't you give me a little garnish, do your green onions on top. Give it a little peanuts. Simone's very first edible stir fry. Mm -hmm. I think my husband would be really happy if I made him a stir fry. I think he would walk back at the door and check for a second if he was in the right house. Now that I know a little bit of your style, what you like to eat, I want to see you get out of the kitchen. We're going to do something a little bit crazy, a little bit different. You know, I think this is going to be something you can do with your son in the very near future and create some kind of lasting food, exciting memories. Okay. Coming up, Simone tries her hand at baking in an industrial kitchen. Yeah, it's scary. Really scary. And later, she's working the line at the grand opening of a dessert hotspot. We can't serve this. This is all trash right now. Simone's a nervous cook, but she's got a new son and needs to learn fast. It's really important for me to learn for his sake. My goal is to help her overcome her culinary disasters. Are you kidding? <laughs> and now I'm going to tap into Simone's favorite cooking memory, baking cookies with her grandmother when she was little. Simone, we're here at Sweet Flour. It's a beautiful bake shop that makes custom cookies. I'm going to put you to work. Let's go make some cookies from scratch. OK. OK? Yeah. This is your first foray into solo bakedomship. You gotta master this baby here. That's yeah, scary. Really scary. But think about it. If you can make cookies in this monster, big, huge machine, you can make cookies at home, no problem. Definitely. So that's what we're working towards. Here's your recipe. Let's go right at it. And in baking, you gotta be precise. So you're gonna take three pounds of butter, you're gonna plop them into that machine. In the house. Right here. See, it has a little secret uh, okay. latch, and then you go, ooh. OK. That's the safety latch. I was like, wow, I'm going to cook in this weird machine. The machinery is a little bit intense. Brown sugar goes right into the big, scary mixer. Ooh. The more white sugar you use, the more crunchy your cookies become. The more brown sugar you use, the more chewy they become. OK, so we're going to have a lot chewier. We're going to, exactly. Now we mix it. So close the little latch, close it all up, press the start button, and see what happens. Ooh. OK, so while that's whipping, you want to add the eggs once you get nice, fluffy butter and sugar. Look at Simone. A little while ago, she couldn't even turn on her stove. Now she's making cookies in an industrial mixer. I'm imagining you with your son making cookies at home. It's just like you did when you were a kid. You'll be able to make them. It's kind of cool, right? For sure. The only thing we have to do is add this flour and chocolate chips. And guess what? Okay. One, two, three, heave. Wait, wait. Scoop it up. Perfect. OK, now they're going to go in the oven for 20 minutes at 320 degrees. OK. Pull out your cookies. Look how awesome they are. Let's look underneath. Look at that. Perfect. All right, shall we taste? Mm, that's chewy. a good cookie. Mmm. See, that's my perfect chewy quotient right there. Simone, you did an awesome job. We're going to go back home now and do a little more cooking. 
I want you to start using your oven. Okay. Simone's still pretty tentative. One way to get her feeling better in the kitchen, focus on having fun. I'm hoping that working with a different kind of dough will excite her and maybe even stir up a little bit of passion. Simone, now we're gonna work with another dough that I think when Jesse gets older, he's gonna love, pizza dough. Okay, great. Okay, we're just gonna be doing two pizzas side by side. One is a pizza margarita and the other one is a little pizza a la grec. And the idea is, is I want you to find the fun in the kitchen. Okay. Sounds good? Sounds great. So you got a little bit of flour. Give me a little Simone like that. Shh. Perfect. Yeah, have some fun because that's all that it's about. Good girl. So you can buy this pizza dough from the supermarket or the white flour. It's got a lot more rising power, so it's gonna get a bit stickier. Whereas whole wheat is gonna be a bit drier. Feel this. Yeah, I know. Oh, that one looks like it's more fun to play with. Okay, so you know what? You're gonna do that one and we'll give me switch. give me that one. We're gonna switch. Now you're gonna pull out your pink rolling pin. My Hi, husband will be so happy I'm really? using this. So we're gonna do a little bit of rolling. It's really fun working with Christine. She's really easygoing and she's very straightforward and she's a really good teacher. Put your hands under it like this. All right, let's try a twirl. <laughs> yes! So that just really kind of loosens things up, but this could be a lot of fun, right? A lot of fun. Just tuck it under like that all the way around. Then what we're gonna do is take some tomato sauce, lay it over top, and you see how I'm not adding a lot? And it might look a little bit dry, but you don't want a soggy pizza. Now for the margarita, a little bit of Canadian mozzarella, and for the pizza alla grec, we're gonna add a little Canadian feta cheese. And the idea is, you can put anything you want on it, so don't worry too much about the toppings, it's more the process. Okay, just like, yeah. No, that's good, making a mess. It's I weird to make a mess, though. I know, but see, I think in the beginning you're gonna make a mess, but then you're gonna learn to cook and keep it clean. Your husband's gonna be, like, losing his mind. It's gonna be a revolution in this house, you know that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's get them in the oven. 500 degrees, maybe 10 minutes until it's nice and crispy. There it is, and then, <gasps> closet. Yeah. We're in. Okay. Yeah. Coming up, Simone has to make dessert for dozens of hungry customers. The customers are getting upset. Way too many are going in the garbage. It's not good at this point. And later, can this nervous cook pull off a meal from scratch for her family and friends? It should be called Mission Impossible. <laughs> Simone is clueless in the kitchen. This poor woman cannot cook. <laughs> but I'm trying to stir up her culinary passion and teach her to make mouth-watering meals. Cheers to you. Not soggy? <laughs> Not soggy. Good. Good. Now I'm showing her a couple of homemade variations of one of her takeout staples, pizza. Oh, mama. Yummy. Pick up. Look at that. It smells really good. Oh. Really, really good. Now, Chef. I'm getting all drooly. I'm getting all drooly. Look at that. Oh yeah, gooey. Ooh. It's all about this. That is ooey gooey, I'm sorry, that's good. You think you can make this on your own? For sure. My husband is gonna be in utter shock if I make a pizza for him, because he'll be like, oh my god, you're not ordering pizza? Or taking it out of the freezer? He, it, I think he'll be really excited. So now we've had a little fun. I think it's time to get back out of the kitchen again, go on a massive challenge for many more people. Lots of people? Lots of people. How many? Can't tell you. Okay. And now, this yummy mummy's in for a shock. We're heading to a brand new dessert shop that specializes in funnel cakes. And Simone is gonna be responsible for making dozens of cakes. If she can get through this unscathed, Cooking for her family is going to be a breeze. We are here at Funnel Fun. In an hour and a half, they are having a grand opening party, which you are going to be making funnel cakes for with your own special summerberry sauce for the crowd that's going to be lined up right outside. Me. Yes. yes. Great. I've never made funnel cake. She said grand opening. How do I make this? This is where you're gonna make these magic cakes. Terry and Syria just finished making one of them. All right, well, come on over. So what you do, you pour in the batter into the fryer. Right, okay. In uh, some nice smooth circles. You're filling in the little empty spots. Okay. And how long does it cook for? No more than 45 seconds. Oh, really, you're spending, it's quick. Yeah, it's a quick cook. So as we can see, the funnel cake's a nice golden brown color. So that means it's ready to plate. 
and then we can put our toppings and such on it. He made it look very easy, and then I tried. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's do it. Maintain a steady hand and just put it in a nice circle. Well, first funnel cake. So yeah, first funnel cake. Just give it a flip. Ooh, it's not so nice. Yeah, we call these little blobs tumors. We don't serve tumorous funnel cakes. So just like I showed you. Oh, oh my gosh, this is not easy. Yeah. yeah, watch out, watch out, okay? Okay, so Simone, we gotta go make our summer berry sauce. That's the lesson, Terrence. Thank you so much. We're gonna come back, okay? So, summer. What is it called? Summer berry. It's a sauce made with strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. You gotta wash all the berries. This is like giving Jesse a bath. So, uh, it's a little easier. <laughs> I say we mix everything all in here. Add all ingredients except for cornstarch. I see some chunks there. That's like B-A-C, big ass chunks. We've got customers outside. I'm just gonna take a little amount and then get you on the station. Here, take your garnish. Oh, oh, oh. Your mint. Okay, I'm coming. Orders. Thank you. <laughs> so our orders are gonna come up, up on this board here. We're gonna see if you can do it. All right. Just nice and even. serve this. This is all trash right now. So just like I showed you, just you gotta take your time with it, okay? Not too thick, though. Nice and thick. Simone's not feeling too confident. She's feeling the pressure because the restaurant is starting to fill. Oh, oh, you gotta get out the oil out. You gotta give it a good shake. And there's people at the door and the tape is tickering. It's like pressure. Like pressure. I have to get this done fast. Order up, two more funnel cakes. Okay, 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 we're coming. You gotta get these orders moving. Orders are piling up, things are not looking good, the service staff is confused, and the cakes are all falling apart. Okay, take out. This is wrong, though. I guess it's wrong. I'm really running out of time in terms of getting Simone comfortable. The customers are getting upset. Way too many are going in the garbage. It's not good at this point. It goes in the garbage. Simone is struggling with the funnel cakes. Customers are waiting, and she keeps making cakes that have to be thrown out. It goes in the garbage. Nice and gentle, nice and slow, okay? Much better than the other one. Just like that, good, that's perfect. You know, just like anything else, sometimes you gotta struggle a bit in order to be successful. Now, let's see if Simone can shine. All you gotta do is call the waitress's name. Okay? Charlotte! There you go, just like that. Christine, take out. That looks fantastic. Nikki! Thanks. Simone has really turned it around. She's calling orders, she's got full command of that station. Look at her. You're handling the pressure. It was a little tough going there, but you're turning it around. It's awesome. That's pretty good. That yeah, was good. <laughs> I cleaned my whole plate. Those are your last two. Great <laughs> job. Simone, you did a phenomenal job. Now you're going to go back home, cook the final dinner for your family and your husband. I hope I just don't burn anything. I hope that my house doesn't burn down. Simone? so excited to have you make your first successful meal all by yourself. You're gonna make a beautiful pissaladiere, a southern French style pizza, and you're gonna make a beautiful roasted chicken supreme. Okay. Off you go. Um, one teaspoon of butter. Okay, so add lime juice. Where's lime juice? Okay, I'm nervous. I feel a little nervous because I have to impress my friends now. Okay, juice of one to two limes. I usually don't touch this stuff. Simone is like an actor 
on opening night. She's got the jitters, but that is good. That means that you care, that means you're alive, that means you want it to be great. Into the oven we go. Ooh, look how pretty this looks. Before she said nothing. Reservations. No. Reservations. Reservations. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Are you guys excited for the dinner? Actually, Paul said he should have eaten before he came because he's a little apprehensive about the food. This should be called <laughs> Mission Impossible. <laughs> I'm just excited for Jesse to be able to have a home cooked meal. I'm excited, but also nervous. I really want to impress my husband and my friends and family and my mother in law. So I hope it all goes well. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and it tastes absolutely fantastic. Simo, you didn't make this yourself. <laughs> mm, tender, juicy. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs>